Hi, I'm Denise Gagne. I'm here today to share with you an overview of Lesson 27 for March Week 4, pre-kindergarten, right up to middle school. And I'm also going to share a new module with you that we've just put together for you, for any time you want some fun, or for a substitute teacher. So in the classic site, this is where you find the online learning, but I'm going to the beta site. And learning modules are here on the left, and then I choose my grade level. So the first module I'm going to show you is our new module of movement song favorites from pre-K, K, one, two, even three. Go older if you want. And as you can see, we've got lots and there's lots of new ones. So the action leader, choose four leaders. And the first is the best one, the second, the slowest, the third, the fastest. This is a Susie and Phil song and your students will love it. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. Be an action leader, I'm sure that you can. Be an action leader, the best one in the land. La 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 and then the be second an leader, leader. I'm sure that you is the slowest. So you pick four kids. The first one does the first section. Second one is the slowest. The third one's the fastest. We go even faster. And then the fourth one gets a little extra section at the end. This is new for your students, but they will love it. Um, then we're going to do one green jelly bean. I show the movements first. And then the lyrics video, one green jelly bean down in my belly bean. Kids, again, this is a favorite, favorite um, beyond those grade levels, if you wish. Elephants of wrinkles, wrinkles, wrinkles. Another favorite of the kids and the kids demo follows. Monkey climbing in the tree, a little Calypso song featuring some monkey moves, which is lots of fun. And the kids, again, you have a kids demo here with our pre-K, go. Bananas, form, form, banana. And again, you have the kids demo. Sleepy bunnies, we're coming up to Easter. This is always fun, but it's fun any time of the year. They really enjoy this. This is preschool class that my granddaughters were in. Button Factory is lots of fun. We have a kids demo. And again, this shows you the power of these movement songs. This is an older group of kids doing a younger kids song, but they still really enjoyed it. Going on a bear hunt is always fun. And here is an in-class demo for those of you that are pushing with carts into classrooms. It's been done for a long time. It's not easy, but this is one song that works well when kids are in their desks. Dinosaur Diddy Wah was a big hit a couple of weeks ago. It was a request for this unit. Here's the lyrics. Fuzzy the Clown is a new one, and I love this one if you have a pop-up puppet. So here is my Fuzzy. And when Fuzzy pops right up, he waves at them. And then, of course, I use Fuzzy for other things. The kids will sing, and they'll move the way the puppet goes. Kids love to be the ones to um, manipulate it. And I've got several of these. I've got a little tiny Fuzzy the Clown puppet. So Fuzzy the Clown, great song, really well written by Susie and Phil. Shake It is another movement song. Follow, do basically what the words tell you to do. Get You Moving, another Susie and Phil song. This one is really good for practicing high and practicing low and getting kids listening really well as they move. And then Come On Dance is one that I've seen Susie and Phil do in workshops. We made a great big circle. You pick one person to be the leader and they make whatever moves they want. When you're embarrassed or you're tired of moving and you want someone else to be leader, you just point across the circle and whoever you point to becomes the new leader. And it uh, it goes on for four and a half minutes, but it is fun and your kids are even gonna ask you to do it again. So this is the new movement songs module. You will find it in general. This is perfect for any time you want some quick movement activities in your own classroom. If you have a substitute teacher come in, just give them the link to that module and they will be all set. So lesson 27 pre-K, March week four, we've got a few new songs, not too, too many, but uh, some really good ones. So we start with time for music and you can be mixing that up now with the beat strips, with the kids keeping the beat. You can be getting new verses from your students and having uh, them create the verses for time for music. 
we have Easter Bobo. And here's my Easter Bobo. I had lots of fun. I found an egg decorating kit that um, I turned into my Easter Bobo. I'm not very crafty, but this was pretty good because it came with all the things I needed. So the kids echo what Bobo sings. Bobo. And sometimes Bobo will tell me something. Oh, you're listening so well today, class. Good job. Well, you you clap that perfectly. Whatever you want that to tell the kids. They they Bobo whispers to me, they really listen when Bobo gives them gives them comments. The 10 little fingers finger play is fun. Um, I'll use this. I have 10 little fingers and they all belong to me. I can make them do things. Would you like to see? I can shut them up tight or open them all wide, put them together or make them hide. I can jump them high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them quietly and hold them all just so. And you have achieved quiet in your classroom. Um, I do the movements again in case you need extra help. Loud and quiet patterns follows because that's a great loud and quiet activity. Um, I like to do this and then the kids will do it on instruments. I have sticks here. Loud, 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 loud. And if you make two copies of it, you can make an eight beat pattern. And of course, if you give this to the kids, they can practice printing the words loud and quiet. I got the jig, 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 jiggles. I got the jig, 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 jiggles. My mama and my daddy want me to be still. But I love the jig jiggles and I always will. I love this song. Kids love it too. I need to add this one to the movement unit and it kind of got forgotten. So I'll put that one in. And here's a kid's demo of grade ones and twos doing the jig jig jiggles. Jump Jack Rabbit is the letter J song, but it's good again just to get kids moving. John the Rabbit is a fun singing game. Sleepy Bunnies is um, again one of the kids all-time favorites and that really ties in well with the loud and quiet and then come and sail away with me just sing sway relax or have the kids lay down on the floor and close their eyes and then after they listen to the whole song sit up and ask them what they what they were thinking about what the music made them think of keep a beat with the theme by Rossini and I love to do it with the stretchy band if you can but if you can't keep a beat with instruments keep a beat with body percussion or different movements and uh, it will be fun and we end pre-k's lesson with skinnamarinky dinky dink skinnamarinky do I love you so a fun lesson for pre-k I'm going now to the kindergarten lesson 27 for March week four. And we've already made some updates to this lesson over last year. Um, there's our objectives. We're gonna do welcome to school. This time you can see I've got sticks. So we're doing instruments now with welcome to school. Echo Bunny Bobo, he really likes kindergarten children too. And then review the song, Knees Up Mother Brown. That's another good one for the movement unit that I'll have to remember and put in. Um, and it's, it's fun for the kids to do. Move to the drum. This is simply a movement activity where they listen to the drum and they make their feet go the way the drum's telling them. And the drum changes. So they're responding to fast and slow and uh, keeping, keeping a beat in a different way, in a full movement way. Then we have the song Tingaleo that comes from the Caribbean, so I've given them a map. And way down here is Trinidad and Tobago. That's one of the possible uh, origins of the song, but it's sung all over the Caribbean, even in Spanish-speaking areas in Venezuela. So we listen to the song Tingaleo, and what I have done with it that isn't online yet but will be for next week is I've added instruments. So to the chorus, Tingaleo. Come little donkey, come. And then on the verses, my donkey walk, my donkey talk, sticks. So sticks and shaker demo is coming for Tingaleo. 
And then there is an activity sheet where kids can think of other things that their donkey might do. This donkey is a pretty silly donkey and kids like that. Action leader, I put that into the kindergarten lesson. Um, the Susie and Phil songs are wonderful and we licensed four of them specifically for the kindergarten program as it's being updated. Then we review from last week, Mr. Troll, Mr. Troll, may we cross the bridge, where they recognize letters, numbers, color, shapes, whatever you want them to recognize. And this is a no touch game. So one that you can do this year if you can't uh, sing, say it, Mr. Troll, Mr. Troll, may we cross the bridge. The Nanny Goats Rap is one of my favorites of all time, and I make up moves to it. I probably should do a demo of this, um, but it really is I think you'll have no problems making up movements to it. So Nanny Goats is the end of the unit. I'm hoping to be able to add a video of the Three Billy Goats Gruff story into this unit as well. And maybe by the time you get to it, it will have been done. So that's kindergarten, lesson 27 for March week four. Now I'm going to first grade, lesson 27, March week four, and in this lesson, we have Welcome to Music with scrapers. And so if you've made pool noodle scrapers for your kids, get them out. Welcome to music, welcome to music. And you play along this week instead of singing along. Um, a rhythm play along, these are fun. And if you have the scrapers out, you could play the scrapers with the play along. This is one of those with the note highlights. It's a beautiful video. And there's a cute little surprise at the end when you see what's behind the rhythms. Echo Bunny Bobo, grade ones love him just as much as your pre-K and your kindergartens do. He's such a little cute little fellow. And he'll tell your grade ones when they're doing something. Oh, Bobo says he'd like you to sit at your desks nice and quietly, please. So he can be a little classroom management helper as well. Uh, create movements to feel and alive. And I've just done new video for this so that you'll have um, actions to follow in it. Bow wow wow, you can do this spaced out far apart. Um, even better if you can take the kids outside, it's starting to get really nice here and I hope that you can. There's a kids demo here where they're close together, but if you have to distance your students, you just use the entire space that you've got. They point and they're far away. Another alternative for this one is simply to ask every child in your class, wherever they're sitting or standing, to look at someone and be their partner in the air. And instead of changing places with their partner, they turn in their own circle. That way they can still do the song. You can use the recording or you can say it if you're not allowed to sing. And then we have interactive activities. First one is point to the beat. The next one is hide some beats in your head. Um, my purpose here, if you haven't taught rest, there's a rest at the end here, but I like this activity because it really develops audiation or inner hearing. Bow, wow, wow. Little Tommy Tucker's dog, bow, wow, wow. And show that last beat, even though it's silent. And then you can have the kids um, figure out how many sounds are on each beat. Bow, wow, wow. And then when we get to little Tommy. And if you want to, the next one does it with notes. And this is where you can label it as the rhythms that you use in your classroom. I still use TT and Ta, but it's up to you whatever you use. And here's where I would label that when there's no sound on a beat, it's called a rest. There is a word rhythm pattern using Tommy and dog. And again, I can have the kids help me create it and do it as a class composition. And then we could decide on what instruments to play. Today I'm going to play the first line on 
my scrapers and the second line on my sticks. Tommy, Tommy, dog, dog. Dog, Tommy, Tommy, dog. And if you can have your kids work with a partner, they can create this. And then you can sing bow, wow, wow as your A section, the rhythm as your B, and then you create a performance piece out of it. We're continuing with Carnival of the Animals in grade one. This is the live footage of the elephant. And then a movement. This is really good movement for kids to feel three, four meter. Um, or, of course, make up your own. Don't copy Mrs. Godwin. And then we have a worksheet. And the purpose of the beats in here is for them to tap the beat as they're listening. Because it is in three, four, I've grouped the beats. Bum, 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 bum. And they'd start over again, but those are to tap the beats as they listen. Is the melody high or low? So they practice printing, they circle low. The double bass plays the melody. There's a piano in here as well, and of course, color the elephant. And then the intro to the aviary. These are Claude La Palme's, um, most of the video is Claude La Palme's bird feeder in his backyard. These little honey hummingbirds um, start off the video. So live footage to start off the video and then move with bird responders, the way that you hear the music go. And then the aviary worksheet has lots of cute little birds here and a flute that plays the bird melody. The other instruments that you hear are all, all listed as well. And does the flute play fast or slow? Does the flute play high or low? And Time to explore games if you have extra time in this lesson. So that's the grade one lesson 27 for March week four. Now I'm going to look at grade two, lesson 27 for March week four. And in grade two, we're doing rain. Where you live, there might or might not be rain, but uh, <clears throat> we're going to do some rain in this lesson. We've got scrapers to welcome to music, and then we've got the song Father Abraham, and we will have a new kids demo for Father Abraham if you're not sure of how to do the movements. It's quite fun. We're going to get rid of this video, and a new one's coming. <coughs> we're going to review the Pizza Hut. A uh, Pizza Hut, a uh, Pizza Hut. If you're not allowed to sing, the movements are just as much fun. Um, if you're not allowed to sing. Echo Mi Sola. These are new solfa videos. We're extending our solfa section. And then because Mi Sola was practiced, hopefully you can have the kids. This is a beautiful little orf arrangement. You can hear it. And the solfa is given here. You start on La, La So Mi. And you can have the kids read the rhythms, read the solfa. The only thing that's going to be tricky for them is the uh, pickup note. Also, it's written in cut time. Just read it in 4-4 four, four time. Don't try to explain cut time to grade twos. Uh, the poem Dr. Foster is given. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his muddle and never went there again. So try creating... Um, an accompaniment for the poem with instruments. Let's try first line with a shaker. And then I'm going to do some stick on the second line. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle raid up to his muddle and never went there again. So try out different instruments. <clears throat> you could also create rain sound effects with little shakers with ocean drums, finger snaps, with taps, and you can get louder. You can crinkle newspaper. Um, so there's lots of different ways of accompanying the poem. If you create those sound effects, they would leave into the poem and then maybe accompany the poem, and then you'd have the sound effects leading out of the poem. Or you could choose words to highlight and then choose instruments to play just on those words. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle right up to his muddle. And I don't know, maybe a finger symbol. Never went there again. 
So three ways to accompany the poem. Try them out. Decide which way you like the best. Um, review of Rain on the Green Grass, because you could put a whole performance together with your rain songs and your rain poems, rain sound effects. Match the melody, and this is to practice La Somi. Listening to Presto uh, from Summer by Vivaldi, and this is a link to an amazing performance. This girl is quite incredible. If Safe Share doesn't work for you, just Google performance of summer of Presto from Summer by Vivaldi, and you'll find, if not this performance, you'll find a similar one. I really like this song. She's amazing. And it is Presto. It absolutely is Presto. And so we've I've included the tempo tool so that you can choose different different uh, tempo. So this is the one I would go to level five because it includes presto. If I want to review what the tempo's terms mean, go here to the teaching slides and I can review each of them. And then I choose the tempo and play along. Let's try it presto. Why not? And I got caught by surprise at the beginning. Um, so that is the grade two lesson, March uh, week four. It's lesson 27. Now I'm going to look at the grade three, lesson 27 for March week four. And here's our outline and our objectives. We're going to start with poison melody. And Poison Melody is one the kids really, really love. Poison Melody. How to play. Echo every pattern that you hear except for the poison pattern. The poison pattern is... So, so, love me, Rado. Ready, set, go. So, so, love me, Rado. And if you echoed it, you just got poisoned. And um, we would echo that one. So you don't echo the poison. Here is a rhythm erase. And I'll give you a clue. It's a song that appeared not long ago. T T T T ta 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 ta. So you read, practice the rhythms, and then take them away one at a time. Clap all four squares. Take another away. Clap all four. Take another away. Take another away. Now, can you perform all four patterns correctly? Check your answers. And then name the song. And I give you a big hint for naming the song because it is in the next activity. So if the kids don't get that it's Shiny Penny, you can review the song and play as needed. And we would play this as as a shell game. Put a penny under one of three cups, move them around, and let the kids guess where the cup is. The wind is a beautiful choral piece. So our suggestion is to listen to it and after each uh, page or section, pause the video and discuss the words. So at that point, I might read through the words with the kids. There's a lot of really good writing in this piece. The wind is like a little elf that dances on my lawn. What Im imagery does that create? It whips and whirls and flips and twirls. Again, just really, really good writing. A really beautiful performance by this Manitoba choir. Um, so then we treat it as a listening activity. You take a piece of paper, you fold it into four, and then you have four squares. You listen to the song, and in the first box, you write, what do you think of when you hear those first few measures? What do I think of? I think of elves. And I write down what it makes me think of. Box two describe some of the elements of music. Was that fast or slow, loud or quiet? What instruments did I hear? 
box three. What do you think the composer wanted us to feel? <clears throat> That's a really interesting one. I think the composer wanted us to feel that it's that he was happy that it's springtime. Uh, and box four, what did you feel? Do you think the composer was successful in making you feel it? So this is really implementing the responding aspects of the national standards in a very simple way uh, so that kids um, respond to music. And then of course, if you're allowed to sing, beautiful song to sing. We have a play along with Air by Purcell. We have a new play along coming, maybe by the time um, you get to use this lesson, we'll have the new play along up with the highlighted boxes so that it's easier for the kids to, um, to read. It and uh, and keep keep on track. And then we have a listening log option for the air by Purcell, where they listen to and they think about their answers to the questions. This is a good one. Is the music quiet or loud? Well, sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's loud. Smooth. Or separated. I would say it's separated. Bouncy. Describe the mood. Hmm. Well, it feels pretty bouncy to me. How does it make me feel? Oh, it makes me feel happy. So that listening log is given in supporting resources, and you can have students fill it out, or you can simply play the piece of music for them and discuss those questions together. So that is, oh, make up movement to go with air. Even more fun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. You could choose leaders to be copycat leaders in this, like um, with the action leader song in grade two. There's review from last week, Stella Ella Ola. We would play that as the same way as can you keep a steady beat? Because we can't clap hands this year. Alouetta, the desk drumming again. And we've got the demo of me doing that. And then scarves, plates, or even just your hands will work. I can do my hands and it feels much the same. Kids love scarves. Round. And if you have plates but you don't have scarves, you can certainly do it with plates. But like I say, plates, scarves, hands, the idea is getting kids to move and experience some music. So that's lesson 27, grade three for March week four. I hope you enjoy it. Now I'm going to grade four, lesson 27, March week four. And we're going to do an activity where we listen to two songs and compare the mood in two different songs. Go on to virtual recorder. And they, the, the final song in the recorder program is Funga Alafia. So it's an option to sing and learn that song. So which rhythm do you hear? It's from the music games. And then we name them. My names don't necessarily match yours, and that's fine. You just get the kids to use whatever you want. And then we have a wonderful play along using those rhythms. This one, I'm gonna play it on scrapers. Two, ready, go. And you can pound scrapers as well. So then we're going to learn the song Tumbai. It's a, a Hebrew song, mostly nonsense words. And you can try using the first line of the song as an ostinato. And again, you decide what body percussion you want to create for this song. And try it, try it out. Decide which way you like it the best. And then try your ostinato with the song. Especially in classes where you can't sing. This gets a song inside their head while they're doing something that... Um, 
is musically engaging and musically authentic. It's really getting them to think because to play an ostinato throughout a song isn't all that easy. And then we're going to listen to the song Mist. So there's some questions here that you could go over with the kids, things that they should listen for. This again is from that same beautiful choir in Manitoba with gorgeous sound. Lots of musical terms and symbols to go over with the students. What does molto rubato mean? you explore that one on your own. Um, so then they compare Tumbai, which was the upbeat Hebrew dance piece, and Mist, which is a very, very different mood altogether. And this worksheet is given in supporting resources for them to compare uh, tempo, dynamics, timbre, mood, all those things. The recorder melody, we have the in, uh, interactive virtual one where you can choose and I would be hoping that at this time of year, my kids are getting down to the end of this. Some years you have good kids, some years you don't. So where your kids are at is all good. Review as much as you need to review and go on to the new ones. And let's try our... Oops. I started wrong. I need to make this full screen and I need to show the keyboard controls because it's much easier to do in the keyboard. If I do that, it's bigger. I can see it a whole lot better. And then I show the keyboard controls. So my B is number seven. There, a little more success that way. Um, full screen definitely helps. And then optional sing Funga Alafia and optional learn the movement for Funga Alaf. So that's the lesson for grade four, lesson 27, March week four. Now I'm going to look at grade five. Um, we have had times this year when grade five and middle school have done the same thing. Uh, this is not the case. Um, grade five is doing dynamics this week. Grade middle school is doing something else. So we start with a rhythm play along. And again, these are rhythms that I would hope my grade fives are being able to play. Review, I am getting such a headache. One, two, three, four, five, six, switch. And they go back and forth with their hands and then they do it twice as fast and then half speed. And then the song Haida is a review from last week. Great movements. If you want to see the kids demo, oh, I did put it in. So here's the movements, um, if you want to review the movements. I love this piece. And again, it uses different tempos. Now we have a video that introduces kids to dynamics terms and a worksheet for them to complete uh, for dynamics terms. If you uh, are using Google Slides with your students, put this as background in a slide. They can complete it on the slide and then turn their work in without having to print it. There's a pop quiz on dynamics. I think I wasn't able to get that link yet, but it will be there. And then we're doing a listening to March of the Trolls by Edvard Grieg. And this is a great listening map. It shows the ABA form very clearly. My speaker is off. So. Great listening map. And then we have a link to an orchestral performance of March of the Trolls. And an optional extra is to play the B theme on a recorder. Do I have one close? I don't. So I can't play it for you, but it's quite lovely. Um, and it's really pretty. So if you're able to play recorders with your kids, that could be an option. Um, and again, that's why it's called optional because not everybody has recorders or is allowed to play them. So that's the grade five lesson. 27, March week three. Now I'm going to middle school, lesson 27, March week four, not three, 
March week four, and it's the second lesson in the songwriting series. So we're gonna do three familiar songs and then have kids write new words. You'll probably want to do at least one of them as a class, as a class activity, so that they get the idea of how you can do it. But then give the kids the assignment and they can do it on their own. So Frera Jaca, Frera Jaca, create new words. I like ice cream, I like ice cream. Yes, I do, yes, I do. It is very yummy in my little tummy. Uh, yum, 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 yum. Um, that one you maybe want to do and then give your kids a choice. That way you're modifying for the special needs kids in your class. They can choose an easier song. Your more advanced kids can choose a more difficult one. So she waded in the water and she got her feet all wet, but she didn't get her wet yet. A little bit naughty. Grade six can handle it, um, but it's fun. They, they like the song, so it's fun to sing if you're allowed to. And then you can use the accompaniment track to do the pink pajamas song. And so this shows how uh, somebody has, these are both piggyback songs, actually, because this is taken um, from uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. So She Waited in the Water is already a piggyback song. Here's a second piggyback song to the same melody. And then here's uh, opportunity for your students to create. I rode my bike on Sunday and I fell off and got hurt. I rode my bike on Sunday and I fell off and got hurt. I rode my bike on Sunday and I fell off and got hurt. But I didn't break my stupid arm. No. Uh, I have got a test on Monday. I have got a test on Monday. I have got a test on Monday, but I didn't break my stupid arm. That was spur of the moment. I apologize for it. It's pretty bad. Take me out to the ball game again. Sing and then have your kids create the melody. If you wish, you can use the search engine to explore shorter songs. such as Twinkle, Twinkle, Bingo, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then you give your kids the choice. They choose one of the songs that they've explored and write their own words for it. So a good assignment for middle school. They go on uh, in lesson three to writing a rap, lesson four to writing um, a 12-bar blues piece. So that is the middle school lesson 27 for March week four. I'm Denise Gagne. Thank you for joining me on this overview. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you have any questions, um, Denise at musicplay.ca. If you have any website questions, support at musicplay.ca. Uh, I hope you enjoy Music Play and it's helping you and your students to keep making music during this strange, strange year.